Hi. I was thinking about how, like, what if we were to actually put enough money and resources into educating, you know, K through 12, uh, our youth? There are so many different ways that people learn, that people learn best. There are different ways that people process information. And if we were to do a lot of tests, not right and wrong tests, but tests that show what kind of mindset people have, you know, I think it'd be smart to start that at an early age and then they get split off into all these categories. Um, there would be a lot more schools, but with uh, fewer students per classroom, and not these overcrowded classrooms. But there would be have to be several schools in each area to handle the different uh, types of thinking. And if someone wished to be reevaluated, they could, you know, at some later point, and then switch to one of the other schools that has the other, that specializes in that kind of mindset. In this way, we could we could make everyone excel at at just if we were to teach that way from early ages. I mean, we could have people doing trigonometry by fifth grade. Um, I, I mean, you know, some people, other people aren't aren't going to necessarily excel in those areas, but they'll they'll get to some high level, what we would normally consider college level stuff. You know, before they've even gotten to high school. Um. You know, we could just, I mean, imagine the standards going up that much. People doing what we consider college level work in, and they're like in, you know, eighth grade. There is a method of learning that I don't ever hear talked about. And there's probably a name for it, but I don't know what it is. Where you learn things by explaining concepts, and you'll be given the word that matches those concepts. You know, it could be a search engine or just a. Uh, uh, but it could also be something that tries to. Uh, show you things that are similar in concept, but like you could go to specific categories in science and describe a phenomenon and it will give you the words that most closely match the phenomenon you're describing. Not a bunch of search results that are uh, um Oh, go to this page and learn this this way of looking at this subject, and um, but it just gives you the names, the, the the words that represent the phenomenon you typed in. Um, then from there, of course, you you click and can search all about those particular things if you wish. But this whole thing would be geared around educating someone via their own curiosities. And so in these schools, if we had that sort of technology, just that kind of software, that kind of search engine available, then to me, there sh- if in, in any of these schools, there would have to be but like a half hour every day in school at some point where you have to s- sit there and think about uh, different types of phenomena. And maybe by the time you reach high school, you know, maybe you could cut it out by then, but just so that there's this curious mind thing going on. 
but and there's just so many things we could do with education. So much that we, so many ways we can improve it. And there seems to be no one wanting to t- to to take those reins of the uh, of being the Steve Jobs of education. You know, if our if if we could actually make our government work for us. Instead of, to some degree, the other way around, which it's not necessarily the government working us, it's the, it's the corporations. As we, as we become a, what is it called, a cortopracy, I don't, I can't pronounce that word, so, at least not right now. One of my problems with the way that we teach, or at least... This is the way that it was when I was in school. There's so many things that have changed in time, but I it, it seems like it's getting worse, not better. And there is a... We're teaching kids in an, using indoctrination techniques. And, and I, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying that, but it's like we think that's the only way that you can teach anymore. Now, this is in the United States. I have no fucking idea what it's like in Canada, what it's like in Europe. I have no fucking idea. But I know here in the States, we use kind of indoctrination methods to some degree. It's... It's like how a lot of people will teach, and I'm just saying this because it's something I can directly relate with, is music theory. Okay, the way that music theory gets taught, it's, it's in many ways, it's saying, this is how you must look at music. You must approach it this way. You can't just listen and analyze what all the notes are, whether you can can perceive the other chords, and the diff, you know, can you hear what the differences are? You don't have to know the name of some of the differences, but can you hear what the differences are? And can you uh, recreate it if you were given the tools? But there's so much of this assumption that if well, if you're going to, to write a some sort of a soundtrack piece and you're using these kinds of instruments, well, you must write them according to these standards. You know, oh, if you're using a, a, a fourth over here, then you have to resolve it over here. You have to resolve it? What's, what's with the, where, where did that come from? Where does this this idea? You have to resolve it. You you have when you do this, you have to do that. It's like this is supposed to be something creative. You shove that forth, and you're just gonna put out a bunch of people putting out the same shit. Well, maybe it's not shit, but I mean, the same stuff. So many other subjects we teach people the same way. And I think a lot of it is because of a lack of technology that we we have now. If we homed in on it, if we tried to refine this stuff, we could eventually make ourselves some of the best educated in the world. But we don't really have many methods, though, that, as I said earlier, that home in on our creativity home in on our, oh, I wonder about this, and I wonder about that. The sense of wonder that one can have with things. And getting the names to match those things that they're thinking about. I mean, that sort of program, if really brought down to a, a, a certain level, could even be done on pretty small children. 
there may be this method. It'd be like a, a, a school of thought on a methodology for learning. I just don't see much of anything like that. I, I, I think so much about, you know, what exactly makes me tick? You know, and I don't, I don't know if I, I, I don't think I could, I was ever really as in tune with that as now. Some of that comes with just age, but some people never figure out. A lot of people never even get a clue on what makes them tick. And so, I think a lot about what methods, with the way that I think, would have gotten me to learn quicker. And I, I, I think about that subject a lot. And how, you know, what, what are ways that it could actually be applied? There are so many different ways that people think and process information. And the parts of them that are just geniuses in some areas and not so great in other areas, I think it's, I think it'd be a good thing to have it, whatever areas someone is a genius in to put that up on a pedestal for that particular person and just really let them excel. There are so many th amazing things we could do with this technology that we have. Amazing things. Just, just, I get teary when I think about how awesome s s technology could make learning. But we're just not, it's, education isn't in our focus. Well, let them pass the SAT or the... There's all these different ones that are... that Oh, it'll help you get entran an entrance into a college. It's like, that's not saying... That's... Uh, like in history classes. There, most of the time, people don't... This is just a sub rant here. History classes are taught to... Memorize names, you know, people's names, the names of places, dates, and some, just even one word or one or two words that are associated with whatever the phenomenon was, whether it was a struggle or whatever, you just have to memorize just those things. You don't actually have to understand what happened. You just memorize a couple little words like that and some names and in dates and, oh, look, you get an A. Congratulations. I remember coming up to one of the uh, teachers and I said, look, um, he seemed such a good teacher, but it just surprised me that he had this answer, you know? And I said to him, this is in high school. Um, you know, I, I'm able to pass these tests. I oftentimes don't... E I, I have no idea what exactly it is that I'm learning here. You know? He goes, well, you're doing all right. And I'm like, yeah, but I... I don't know what I'm learning. I'm just memorizing these these names and dates and a couple phrases from whatever the a description of the struggle is. Oh, oh, then you're learning it, he said. And I'm thinking, did you did you did I and, and I tried to re-explain it. And no, no, that's fine. You're learning. That's 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 all that matters. I'm going, what am I learning though? Now maybe some of it's something where we have to remember it and then later in our lives we look look it up or we get we get those names in our head in a similar way to how we'll get a commercial in our head associated with an action or a 
or a couple colors together or a phrase that someone says and you think about a commercial, right? And so we kind of teach, you know, when I was in high school, we were teaching history where you could remember it remember you 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 somehow learn something by remembering things like we do commercials those of us who are from the generations that were tv generations where a lot of people my age were brought up by tv and back when people were being brought up by tv there was still some journalism left. You know, just looking back, technology gave us, like, look at the 1950s, you know, when, when television started, you know, becoming a big thing. What an opportunity it was to indoctrinate the people. If different entities, whether it's the government or... Uh, uh, an owner of many different businesses or one huge corporation or a bunch of companies together or whatnot, but television really does have the ability to program people. You know, I have always found it so odd that the, the, the term television program 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 let me let me look that up I just I, it might seem like a strange word to just look up but let's let's look at this for a second program yeah well we've got sorry as a noun a planned series of, of future events items or performances a sheet or booklet giving details of items or performance performers at an event or performance and then as a verb it's provide a computer or other machine with coded instructions for the automatic performance of a particular task and then arrange according to a plan or schedule so if you look at the phrase television program as a verb use program as a verb I don't know it's just one of those things I, I, I always used to think about I still sometimes think about we have walls that we build around ourselves some of these walls are things that we had to do to survive in the past Some of this is us needing a, a way to insulate ourselves from everything around us. In that regard, I can understand why people talk about needing safe spaces. On the other hand, the places where people are getting these ideas for this are in places where, dare I say this phrase, toxic diversity. So in the past, we had, you know, radio affecting culture being a controlling force. Then we had TV, which became quite a controlling force. Now we have the internet and TV is on its way out and the power that used to be there to either stop people from thinking for themselves or to indoctrinate people or to get people in certain kinds of mindsets. Like, I mean, I, I mean most of television is... The programs you see on television, they're somewhat designed to get you into the mindset to absorb the commercials that are played during the commercial breaks. 
most stuff is designed as a program in both a noun and a verb sense. We'd sure have a lot more public access TV in more places if that wasn't the case, but most people have replaced all of that stuff with the internet anyway. YouTube is is better than any uh, public access kind of channel, really. <clears throat> so, but we've went from having been controlled by media for so long. We're still controlled by media, but in a different way when it comes to the internet. You know, now the control is your likes and desires and the subjects you talk about are, those things are getting linked with products via the internet. But our, now it's all about data gathering. Because they can't really control us the way that they used to be able to control us. So now it's about data gathering. But we also, we, we don't have these walls anymore. The internet has destroyed a lot of these walls. And it starts to go into the rats in a cage theory. You know, you put too many rats in a cage and they end up killing them. They end up killing each other. And with humans, we need that... We need those walls. We need that personal space. But because we're now revolving our lives around the internet, so many people are anyway, they have a big social life on the internet, We, are, we have diversity to such extremes that we never have. The more diversity, the more chaos. That's just how it goes. And in order to have more diversity, we need to find out, we, we need to be better at dealing with chaos. We're not doing a very good job preparing people for that. We're still educating kids based on some models that are so fucking old. And then there are some other models that's just all about trying to make the school look better versus actually trying to educate the people. Oh, look, we pa they, they passed all of these certain tests with great scores. Yeah, that means you you have kids you have kids and young adults coming out of there that are more educated? No, they just pass those tests better. Whoop de doo. <laughs> and we have schools being judged uh, poorly if they if the, the students don't get very good grades in that you know in, in a lot of classes in that school. Oh, the school must be doing poorly. Uh, no, no. Bad grades aren't actually a. In certain regards, when if it comes to people dropping out or something like that, but bad grades is not necessarily a sign that a school is not doing a good job educating people. Sometimes schools actually try to make sure the, the, the students actually know what the heck they're doing and what, what the heck they're talking about. And when they do some thorough tests, they find that they don't. So... Well, let's punish those schools so they do everything so everyone, ever, all, everything on paper looks wonderful. Oh, look how beautiful this is on paper. <laughs> so to me, if, we're, if we're to learn to deal with diversity, we're to learn to deal with more chaos, shouldn't we be preparing people for diversity? Shouldn't we be letting people figuring out ways to help those who think certain ways to deal with things the best they can in reference to the fact they think they think those certain ways. People are hardwired to think certain ways. We have these differences in learning, uh, ways that we learn, ways we process information, uh, hand-eye coordination. We have, we have all these different ways. 
about us, things we excel in, things we don't excel in. And if we turn everybody and just try to put them through this cookie cutter kind of methodology, I mean, it's there'll be the few that really thrive in that kind of environment and really get something good out of their education. And then everyone else is just like, oh, you know, so it seems, I mean, if we don't care about really educating kids uh, thoroughly in that regard, how can we be so surprised with how many people are willfully ignorant about things? And when you think about how uneducated a lot of the baby boomer generation was and what that's translating to now what's what are things going to be like when the people who are pushing forth all this shit we're seeing at these colleges and all this shit we're seeing on social media what's going to happen when those people are raising families what what are those kids going to be like how uneducated are we going to be okay being indoctrinated i don't really count that much as being truly educated trying to make everyone have a, sp a particular ideology that's not an education that's indoctrination It seems to me the more we learn how not to deal with diversity and the more diverse we get, the more we're going to act like when there are too many rats in a cage.